Ray Mark here from newhometricks.com and today I want to talk a bit more about our Tardo system, specifically multi-zone control. Um, you may remember in the previous video where I went through the actual installation and setup of one of the Tardo smart radiator thermostats, I promised I'd revisit this topic on how multiple zones actually worked in Tardo. And also I touched upon it briefly in the first impressions video that I did. Obviously there were a few unanswered questions there such as how multiple zones actually work in Tardo. Now that we've had this in for a little while, I can go through in a bit more detail and explain how we're getting on with it and how it works. And in a moment, I'm going to get into showing you how that actually um, all works inside the app. But first, um, we now have three zones set up in our Tardo system. We've got the original zone, just called House, and then we've added two additional zones. So we set up um, the radiators in our living room. We've got two radiators in there, so we've attached a Tardo smart radiator thermostat to both of them, so we've now got a uh, a zone simply called living room. Uh, and then we've also installed a Tardo smart radiator thermostat on the radiator in our bedroom. So we've got a master bedroom uh, zone as well. And we also added a smart radiator thermostat to one of the guest bedrooms, but we simply made that part of the existing house zone. So we didn't actually set up a new zone with that. I'll talk a bit more about how that's actually working in a moment. But with Tardo, whenever you add any new devices, like a smart radiator thermostat, or you can add additional regular thermostats, the sort of wall thermostats that you can get. Whenever you do that, you can use that process to create a new zone, as you saw at the end of the installation of a um, smart radiator thermostat. You're, you're asked whether you want to add it to a, an existing zone or create a new zone. And if you create a new zone, you then have a completely separate um, set of settings that you can apply to that zone for your temperature preferences, your scheduling, everything is completely independent for that zone, except it is still able to call for heat through to your boiler. So as you may remember, we have an extension kit attached to our boiler, and that's what allows the Tardo thermostat that we originally got with the starter kit to call for heat, request heat to be activated from the boiler, um, during the scheduled times if required. When you have multiple zones set up, those zones can all call for heat independently as well. So if you've got one room that's not warm enough and the heating is supposed to be active at that time, it can call for heat. Conversely, if you've got other rooms in your house, other zones that are calling for heat, but you've got other zones that have already hit temperature, well, if those zones are being controlled with smart radiator thermostats, they can, of course, close down those thermostats so that the heat isn't going into that zone when it's not necessary. So you're getting a lot of control over the different heat areas of your house and of hopefully getting a bit more efficiency and economy in that regard. So to explain that in a little bit more detail, let's have a look at how that works inside the app and I can show you all those settings now. Okay, so if I launch the Tardo app, you can see how we've got things set up now. So this is the main zone. You can see here up at the top um, that it's declared as the house zone. So this was the zone that we initially set up when we first had the Tardo starter kit. But now we have two additional zones. And there's a couple of different ways that you can switch between them. The first is to tap on the hamburger menu in the top left. And this brings up the full menu. And you can see now that we've got the three zones, house, living room and master bedroom and you can see against each of these we've got different icons to show how these rooms are being controlled so I switch over to living room uh, this is being controlled purely by the two smart radiator thermostats that we've got attached to the radiators in that zone uh, the master bedroom's only got one smart radiator thermostat but they all kind of look pretty much the same on the surface um, you can also switch between the zones simply by swiping um, between each zone in the main screen. So fairly easy to just flick between uh, each zone. Each zone has got its own um, set of schedules and temperature settings. So if you tap in the uh, top right here on the little icon of the um, calendar and thermostat, you tap on that, you get the schedule for the house. And if I go back and switch over to the living room and tap on the same icon again, um, you can see that we've got a different schedule set for the living room versus other zones in the house. So you can set a completely different schedule, temperature, everything for each zone in your home. So this means that with smart radiator thermostats, you're not only getting the ability to control temperature on a room-by-room -room basis, you're also getting the ability to control when each room is heated. So this can provide additional uh, economies and savings. So for example, if I go back in here into the living room schedule, you can see that most days 
uh, apart from Saturday and Sunday, we don't really have the living room heating until later on in the afternoon. That's because typically, uh, for us, we don't typically tend to use the living room in the morning. So it doesn't really make sense to heat a room um, that you're not really going to use. So this allows you to sort of add additional economies, potentially realizing additional savings by saying, no, I don't want heat to be directed to a particular room that I'm not using at certain times of the day. So it allows you to customize in that regard. Um, every other setting is also done on a room by room basis. So if I go back to house here and go into uh, the schedule and go to the away screen, we've got the preheat setting here on comfort for this particular zone. Uh, if I go and look at living room, we've got that set to balance. And if we look at master bedroom, we've got that set to uh, economy. So you can choose different away mode settings for each room and each zone independently. The same even goes for the early start feature, which we've explored uh, in previous videos. So you've got complete control of each room. And of course, that goes for manual control as well. You can initiate manual control of each zone uh, as you wish. So you can completely uh, set this um, however you want at any time. Now, the main thing for how these zones work is you'll notice as we've explored in the past the th sort of three wavy lines right in the middle here, uh, just above the temperature bar. If I tap on that, uh, it should come up and say what the heat request level is currently. Now, as I um, kind of explored previously in the um, uh, first impressions video, what this corresponds to for a zone where you have a thermostat and a boiler, um, whether it's attached directly to the boiler or via the extension kit wirelessly, is that these three wavy lines will show you whether you've got a low, medium or high heat request, or no heat request if the heat isn't, isn't on or isn't needed at that particular moment. So for a, an older boiler, this is going to translate to what percentage of the time the boiler is running. So it will actually control how frequently the boiler is active during that period in order to kind of control uh, how hot your radiators might be getting. Uh, so um, it, it will use that as a way to control that. If it's a more modern boiler, it can actually communicate the heat request directly through to the boiler and the boiler will itself modulate its heat output as necessary. If you have a zone where you have smart radiator thermostats, this corresponds to the open and close levels. So for a high heat request, um, that's fully open, allowing hot water to flow into the radiator. Uh, obviously a low heat request, it's going to be closing that valve down a little bit so that um, less hot water is flowing in and medium is somewhere between the two. And no heat request or a heat request showing as none, as I think we've got in the master bedroom currently, that means the radiator valve is completely closed down, so no hot water would be flowing into the radiators. Um, the, these zones, um, however, can also call for heat directly from the boiler. So even though um, it was the house that was the original zone where we have the uh, extension kit set up, the extension kit is also um, a feature of all of these other zones. So what that basically means is that the living room, um, if it calls for heat, uh, we've currently got a heat request of medium, it means that it will open up the radiator valves and it will request that the boiler fires up, even if the main house thermostat um, is currently at a heat level of none. Um, so any individual zone can call for heat and trigger the boiler to fire. Um, so, you know, even if you've only got one zone in your house that needs to be heated, the boiler will fire up. So it's clever enough to do that. If you equip all zones, all radiators in your house with smart radiator thermostats, that means that even if only one zone is needing heat, everywhere else will be closed down. So it's very um, smart. <laughs> it's obviously a smart heating system. It obviously knows that uh, that particular zone needs heat and it will therefore fire the boiler. This is again another distinction from having just a regular thermostatic radiator valve in as much that um, if a particular room is cold the radiator valves might be open but they of course have no way of communicating to the boiler that it needs to be on. Uh, the boiler will only be on if your master thermostat is calling for heat or if the timer is saying it's time to be running the boiler. So this is a much better setup and of course you can override on demand at any time and just you know, change the settings in the app here or walk up to the radiator thermostat and turn the dial to turn the temperature up. So you get complete control. Uh, you also get complete visibility on a zone by zone basis of the temperature 
in each individual room. So you can again get all of that information that we explored in the first impressions video to see what the temperature was in the room throughout the day, um, the current, uh, the, the heat status at any particular time of the day using the bar at the bottom of the screen, and then the shaded areas correspond to the heat request during that particular time. So you get all of that information uh, is available uh, in the app. So it's very easy to explore uh, everything that's been going on in your house. Um, one final thing that I will note, and, and this is um, to a certain extent uh, the only criticism that I can level at this, is that the heat request um, level for uh, a zone that is controlled by smart radiator thermostats, you can only do whole degrees. Whereas when you're talking about uh, a zone that is controlled by the wall thermostat, the main Tardo thermostat that we originally got, well then you can do in 0.1 degree increments. So you've got a lot more granularity. And it's interesting to me that this is the case, because if I go into the living room zone here, for example, which again is uh, only using um, smart radiator thermostats, it's not got a, a separate thermostat for that zone. Uh, if I tap and hold, you can actually see that the heat request level throughout the day has been set to um, you know, 18.7, 13.7, um, it's got the information recorded. So why the temperature that you can set yourself um, is in whole degrees only, I do not know. Um, you could, of course, add um, uh, the ability to have um, more granularity by also adding an additional smart thermostat, the wall thermostat, to each zone. But, of course, that's kind of um, just sending the cost up a little bit. The only other th uh, criticism that I've got, and if I look at the master bedroom here, for example, um, let's go to a previous day where maybe you can see this in a little bit more detail. Um, yeah, so here, for example, you can see that um, the radiator kind of came on and the temperature shot up very quickly and, and the valve closed down again. And then you've got this kind of bouncing up and down during the periods when uh, heat is called for and only for very, very short bursts does the heating appear to be actually flowing into that boiler. Now the only explanation I can come up with for that is that the um, valve opens up, the hot water flows into the radiator, and very quickly you end up with the radiator getting hot, and so the smart radiator thermostat heats up very quickly as well. And as a result of which, the system thinks, I've hit temperature, and closes down again, um, which is not so smart. Of course, once the radiator is hot, it's going to be continuing to put heat out into the room for quite a, quite some time, but it may not necessarily be following through that the, um, that the whole room has heated up to the desired level. Of course, the only way to measure that would be to have a thermostat somewhere else in the room, or maybe there's something that Tado could do to kind of um, make this a little bit more clever, but for the time being, that seems to be the way that it works. And as I say, the only other way that you can add um, a slightly more accurate reading and gain more granularity of the control that you have over the temperature is to add a full Tardo thermostat to each zone. But of course, that, like I say, that's going to add a lot of extra cost if you wanted to do that. Uh, I don't know if there's a limit to how many devices you can have, but nevertheless, that, that's not necessarily um, the way that you would want it to work uh, entirely. One final point to note is that, as mentioned during the introduction, we did install a smart radiator thermostat in uh, the house zone, and we just added that to the existing zone. That is installed in a guest bedroom very close to the um, location where we've got the main Tardo thermostat. So um, obviously it's only really going to be able to heat the house up properly and detect what's going on in the rest of the house if you know, a certain amount of heat is getting to it. So in this regard, when the main thermostat is calling for heat, um, that radiator will also be open as well and be heating. Um, so these things can complement each other in a, in a single zone, and you can set these up however you want. But hopefully that's given you a good overview uh, of how multiple zones work and how they work together with each other when you have a boiler uh, for the whole house. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a good overview of how zones work inside Tardo and how all of those settings are exposed in the app and how you can uh, configure them to meet your um, personal heating needs. Um, obviously there are a few questions that still remain, such as to what degree is this actually saving us money? Um, this is the sort of thing that we will only really be able to make a proper assessment on after we've had the system in for a much longer period of time. Um, as we've explored in some of the previous videos, Tardo has its own 
energy saving report that it does give you inside the app, but how that actually matches up with your heating bills is something that remains to be seen. So obviously we'll have to uh, review that after a little bit of a longer period. Plus we of course do want to carry on expanding by installing more smart radiator thermostats in other parts of our home uh, and we'll be able to sort of see then uh, the continued difference that that makes. So more to do there. Uh, in the meantime I have written up a companion blog post, you can find the link to that in the description below or you can visit the website newhometricks.com. If you've liked this video please share it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.